I'm sure um, a whole lot of you looking at uh, you, if I can see you through the light, uh, have experience with university structures. Either you've uh, studied for a number of years or you've uh, been lecturers like myself, I also teach, um, or, or working on research projects like a lot of the people we've seen now. And um, we get very used to the, the particular structures and divisions that we have in our universities. For instance, um, we tend in our universities to divide um, uh, fields of study uh, according to different ways of understanding or seeing of or, or of uh, uh, researching the world, for instance, we would have a faculty of science and then we would have a faculty of humanities, as if they're not connected. And uh, we would have a faculty of arts, if we're lucky. Um, and uh, these we really, really, really start taking for granted and they separate it out in various ways. Sometimes we know the separation is geographic. Um, my own institution has a... Um, five campuses that are scattered over the city uh, and it's quite hard sometimes to get from the one to the whoa but <laughs> someone was angry at that um but uh also sometimes when these faculties or these different uh, ways of understanding of the world come together in one space we start really to feel the psychological and the territorial clashes between them the two projects that i'd like to show you today uh, really challenge those divisions and um, I'd like us to, to look through them quickly. The first project I want to introduce you to is called Josie Rhythm Analogues. Um, it's a project that I started a number of years ago with a good friend, Teresa Collins. And we um, started by filming uh, spaces in Johannesburg using time-lapse photography, uh, filming these spaces for cycles of 24 hours. And uh, what we ended up seeing was that all of these spaces that we thought we knew quite well had uh, hidden rhythms and hidden cycles that unfold throughout the day. Um, I then took this project a little bit further, now moving from film into a bit more of a scientific investigation. And uh, I generated, I found a way of generating graphs that actually show us exactly the amount of movement that is happening in these places over time. So to read these graphs uh, is in a way very simple. The lighter areas represent a lot of movement and then the darker areas represent uh, calmer mov moments or uh, quiet, quiet times in the day. And you can see here the relationship between the films and the graphs. If we synchronize them absolutely, there's a moment coming now, there, where the taxis in this taxi rank all enter the rank at uh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. They've been waiting outside since two o'clock. And that's, you can see how that's represented on the graphs. So we have data. Um, this data can also be put on a time grid and you can see here how um, at a certain time between seven in the morning and nine in the morning in that same taxi space, uh, there's a lot of activity and it has a certain pattern to it. At this stage though, what was happening with the project was that it was moving from film, which is a very visual understanding, to more and more cerebral scientific kind of understanding. And it was important for us then to move it back um, maybe into an understanding more of the body or of sound. Uh, for that purpose, we involved three really interesting musicians who helped us to uh, take this uh, uh, data graph, really, and interpret it as a graphic score so that the musicians then started reading this graph really as music. We had a performance then where um, the musicians would uh, read the graph, which was displayed in front of them, but, uh, so that the audience could also read it, uh, and the films were displayed behind the musicians, and the audience had this very rich experience analyzing the graphs with their heads, feeling the music with their ears and minds and bodies, uh, and integrating this whole experience in a way that um, usually uh, would be separated out. The second project that I'd like to show you quickly is um, a project called Uncles and Angels. Again, uh, it's a project that kind of moves between these modes of uh, scientific and technological investigation and, and a kind of socially critical art. Uh, I collaborated with this on, uh, project with the choreographer and performer Nelly Siwe Klaba, who is also from South Africa. And uh, the project basically, uh, it's a critique of um, certain aspects of how patriarchal societies treat feminine sexuality in Africa and in the West. Uh, 
this particular technology that we're using uh, involves uh, having her perform in front of the screen while at the same time the image of her is captured by a camera and sent back. You can see the interaction gets quite violent at some time. But it gets sent back to the back of the screen and then she interacts um, with these kind of live projections that are created at the time. Uh, a key aspect of this technology was a, a discovery that I made with optics, which allowed us to um, uh, get around a certain problem. And I'm not sure if we're going to see that problem now. Will we be able to? There we are. This is a very specific problem that we have with video. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you can see that's called, thank you, that was called, that's called um, video loop feedback. And uh, to get around this problem, because our camera is pointing directly at the screen, um, I developed a very simple technological solution which allowed the camera, instead of seeing what the audience sees on the screen there, the camera literally sees that, which is just a black screen behind Nelly Seaway, which allows me to then feed the clean signal back uh, into the performance. Um, both of these projects have a certain way of moving very fluidly between um, social critique, artistic expression, uh, uh, empirical science, technological innovation, without really ever getting stuck between them. And I think going back to my own institution right now, which is an African university, and your institutions here I would also qualify as being African institutions, um, I think we need to think about what are these divisions between these different ways of understanding the world, head, body, sound, and so on. Um, why are they there? And, well, we know why they're there. We've, we've inherited them from the West, but luckily we, we are not the West, and I think we can eventually imagine a slightly different way of doing things. Thank you. <laughs>